Okay, here we are back inside Matrix Gold. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. Hope you find the uh, video useful and uh, helpful in your designing process. If you're a return viewer, I can't tell you uh, thank you so much for subscribing and your comments and your support. It's really, uh, really appreciated. Uh, today, I uh, had a question on uh, gems on multi, uh, gems on curve multi, uh, which Matrix Gold does not have. Uh, <clears throat> I think they uh, leave it up to Pave Builder because when you click on Pave Builder, uh, you, you have the option of hexagon or uh, straight, right? Uh, whereas uh, the in Matrix 9, there was a gems on curve multi where you had those options. So uh, maybe they incorporated it in there. Uh, I am doing more research to try and find out if there is something. Uh, out there on that but uh, right now I haven't so I kinda did a workaround and that's what I'm going to show today so Jim's on uh, curve multi uh, workaround <laughs> uh, so we'll go ahead and get started uh, first we'll go to our tools we'll just grab a cathedral re uh, ring and I'll just go ahead and, and uh, do a little manipulation here hold down shift drag that up to 2.5 2 2.5 and we'll leave the top alone for right now and hit enter and then I'll just place a gem on there uh, gem on ring rail and we'll drag that up to holding down shift to our center there and we'll go ahead Z offset that just a little bit something like that and we'll hit enter and then we'll go back to our uh, cathedral rail and we'll do a little editing to bring that rail up uh, so we'll grab that bring that up a little and we'll just go ahead and drag this maybe uh, down a little and we'll go back and drag it up I want a little bit sharper edge there somewhere around here maybe and we'll drag it in just a little and something like that and hit enter and I'll just grab that ring uh, that rail there and we'll go ahead and throw a profile on it and uh, we'll change that profile to uh, my favorite number two and we'll hit select and we'll close out of that and we'll go to our outside rail and hit there and we'll do a little manipulation we'll drag that out holding down shift to a six so it takes it out in increments of 0.5 oh. cancel all right we'll, well we'll take that there and now we'll move it to a six all right and we'll take that and uh, we'll go down to our bottom here holding down shift so we'll get it right there in our mid and we'll hit enter and we'll do a little manipulation on this one we'll drag this one in holding down shift to a four and hit enter and now we'll go to our surface and uh, sweep two this rail here that rail there that profile and that one and hit enter alrighty so we have this and we'll just pop that up just a smidge in there and we'll hit uh, enter so we have that now I'll go to my right view there's uh, several ways you can do this you can extract ISO curves uh, 90 degrees both directions and then do a trimming I'm just going to do it the old-fashioned way uh, and we're going to go through grab a polyline curve it, curve and I'll switch that to yellow and we'll start so somewhere with my snaps off and uh, we'll start somewhere on uh, this side of the Z and uh, somewhere around here and I'll hold down shift drag it over to about here bring it down not quite to our uh, Y offset or Y line and somewhere around here and then hold down shift and bring it over to there and I'll click off it and I'll uh, right click back on and go to my uh, F4 and hold down shift so it's straight up and then I'll just click I only need that one line so I'm going to turn off my uh, gemstones my uh, ring and my ring rail uh, and I'm going to select that profile and this profile and I'll change them to gray and hide them never know when you might need them and then I'll select all this and we'll do a little trimming 
So I'll get rid of this, 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 and this, and hit enter. And uh, I'll take this and I'll mirror it, F4, holding down shift, and we'll select all that and we'll just join that together. Alright, and I'll bring back my ring row, or half a ring row. <laughs> And uh, we'll go to our uh, multi views. All right, and I'm going to select that rail that we just drew, and I'm going to drag it out just to the right side of my item there. And I'm going to do work on my uh, right viewport. Okay, so we'll go down and we'll go from object, and we'll just project that curve. Uh, enter. Oh, sorry. Do it again. Surface this one. Enter. Okay, let's back out of that. All right. Here we go again. Uh, select the curves. This curve. S enter. Select surface. This one. Enter. And there we go. All right. So we have that on our r ring there, and we'll just grab this one that it put on the other side the curve and we'll delete it we don't need it and I'll turn it to shaded here so we can get a better look alright and now I'll take this surface and uh, I will split it with that curve and hit enter and there's our surface so we'll do a surface offset because we want an indentation there uh, and we'll go to our offset select our and it's pointing in the wrong direction so we'll flip it and it's set at a point four, which should be fine. So we'll hit enter and we have that. And uh, we'll take that and we'll just explode it. And I'm going to get rid of that one and I'm going to get rid of that one. I just would rather f uh, do another surface sweep than have that uh, on there. But I do like having these edges here on the inside right here. So uh, I'll go to my curve and uh, go to object dupe border we'll select this one this one this one that one and hit enter okay so we have that and we'll just go ahead and do another surface it just seems to give you a little bit better surface when you re-sweep it so that's why I do it uh, so, uh, select our rails Sweep it to this one, this one, this one, and our one at the top there, there, and hit enter. See, I see the surface just seems to be better. Uh, and we'll turn off all this because uh, it's uh, unneeded, and we'll hit enter. Okay, so now we have that surface. I'm just going to change that surface to another color here, uh, maybe not that bright. Uh, and what we'll do now is we'll go to our curve. We're still on yellow, so we'll go back to the front, uh, extract an ISO curve, and I'll try to get it right in the center there. And hit enter. And then I'll grab me another one, like right around in here, and hit enter. And then another one on the other side, about the same spot to get there. Now, uh, like I said, I think they were using the, you know, there's not a mul curves, curves on, uh, oh, what is it? <laughs> curves on rail, uh, gems on curves, uh, multi in major school. I think they are going with uh, the Pave Builder. So l let's just look at this real quick before we move forward on to do these multis. Uh, I did kind of doing a workaround. So here's uh, just first one, the pave, because you can use the pave, and we we already have that surface by itself, so we can hit enter, uh, and you can change it from hexagon to straight here, and of course you can adjust uh, the gems, uh, you know. So there's a lot you could do here. That leaves a lot of spacing, doesn't it? But you can you could space between gems. You could space them out, you know, so that they fill up that area. You could go to straight. Uh, you could close it back in. You can make them bigger. Uh, 
you just had kind of have to play around with uh, the like right there one pointers seem to be you know pretty good uh, but uh, if you look at it though they're all just lined up right they're not really the rails are a little bit uh, more curved because our shank is tapered a little bit uh, where these are not so uh, it's just kind of playing around with it what works best so if you go in there you go and <coughs> drop that down manipulate it some you can do all kinds of stuff a tolerance between stones if you go up a little bit or down a little bit but you can play around with that it's all different kinds of ways to put them on there this I guess is what I'm saying so it's something like that you know so let's go back alright now you can do them individually which is probably uh, pretty good because then you can you have more power to manipulate them uh, if you did them individually uh, but you can do them all together so let's go ahead and do them together first uh, so let's uh, we s select uh, gems on curve but we'll take one two, three rails and hit enter. See, so now it, it puts them all up there and then you can drag them up. You can come over to your, well, first we want to need to set them to our surface and then you can uh, just manipulate them from here, right? So something like that. Uh, and you can switch on your taper end and go up here and grab these and make them a little smaller so uh, that's kind of a workaround on to use them right because it will work there's there's no problems with it, uh, it you just don't have as much control uh, say your space spacing looks pretty good here uh, but say if they were just done individually you sometimes uh, I hit enter our stones are off so let's turn back on a lot of times what you could do is you could grab that curve and then just move the curve around and the stones would update but sometimes it won't it just right for some reason it's kind of finicky but if you did them individually they would uh, and sometimes if you take them and they ungroup them all uh, it'll work too it's just it, it's just really kind of uh, strange uh, but it's not working today which is not unusual for me <laughs> uh, but you know that's that's kind of how you can do the gems on multi gems on curve you can actually put more in there or select more uh, but let's go ahead and keep moving forward uh, let's go ahead and uh, just now here's another uh, thing if you do prongs right you select them all and you try to put uh, prongs on them first of all you can't even use this it'll freeze up or break down or I don't know maybe it'll work for you but it doesn't for me uh, you have to go to pave prong right and then select your surface and wait for and you know I guess if you like that kind of look uh, I don't it kind of looks messy and ununiform and just not not something I really like so I wouldn't use that what I would do is I take my stones uh, ungroup them and then just go through and uh, select that one row and change them to a different color and then group them so that that one's grouped and then go through and do the same thing to one other side here and then change them to another layer and then uh, group them and then go to my yellow minus our center stone there and then group them so now they're all there but they're grouped together now you can go in and just do these prongs uh, which I think this is a much better look for this particular design I guess it really depends on what you're working on and what kind of look you're going after uh, and then we can just go ahead and uh, do our manipulations from here and I'll go to that end prong and we'll drag that uh, nudge a little bit something like that 
hit enter all right and then we'll just do the same thing here first thing I always do get that height and that's one thing I don't want to make sure mess up and then I'll go in and grab my end do a little nudge little nudge not a lot something like that hit enter and then our last ones here first thing go for the height and then go for our outside prong little nudge and hit enter all right and there you go yeah all right and now what I would do is uh, take this and go ahead and explode it and then select all this down here and then delete it and then go to my green since we that surface is uh, separated anyway and then join it all together okay so now uh, that's uh, oh, okay we need to select that surface too and this surface and join it back together okay and then I'll switch it to green again then I'll take that surface and I'll mirror it over to uh, from F4 over to the other side. Uh, actually, I should have taken them all. So I'll select all my gemstones and my prongs and do it one more time since I missed it the first time and hit enter. Okay, so we have all that, right? Alright, so now all we have to do is take that, that, join it together. One closed poly surface, bring back our ring rail. And go in here. And let's see, uh, we want to uh, grab a curve, so go to tools, or profile rather. And we want change that profile to our number two and we want to manipulate it a little take it to about a two and we don't need it so high we'll take it down to about a 1.5 1.6 and we'll just mirror that and we'll turn it to wireframe make sure it's there and it is so we'll go ahead and hit enter and of course one more uh, sweep one here, here, enter, and we'll keep those caps on and hit enter. And actually, we'll take this and we'll just, okay, and we'll take this one and we'll just try this here for some reason. We have this, okay, go to our styles, and we'll select this thing here, hit in, load it, and it's going to do the same thing. Nope, it did it. I'll be darned. I don't know what was going on there. Uh, but hey, I have your problems too, so if you have them, <laughs> don't be surprised. Uh, so let's, I'm just going to go ahead and accept that for right now, and then we'll go back to my gym and see if I can edit it without it blowing up on me. We'll go to Cushion Square this time, and we'll make it uh, bigger. and it should everything should update and we'll go ahead and make it uh, a little bit bigger and we'll uh, Z offset that a little bit more and actually we'll just go ahead and make it just a pinch bigger and we'll take that and we'll go back to our head and see if it's going to be friendly drag that down and there you go alright 
Let's go back here again one more time. And let's make that a little bit heavier. 1.4, yeah. Okay. All right, that all looks good. Is our ring still solid? Oh, it says varies now. No, now it says close. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that's closed. Alright, so the only thing left to do, really, uh, let's go ahead and uh, do the uh, bullions, bullion unions, see if these work. These were giving me some problems here a little bit ago, so let's, uh, alright, well, first surface would be our ring, second would be these prongs here, and it worked, I'll be darned. Okay, first surface ring, these prongs here, and it worked. First surface ring, these prongs here, and we're batting a thousand so far. Only reason why I'm doing it separately is if one doesn't work, I know which rail, uh, which prongs I need to readjust, so that's why. Uh, this surface, and it doesn't really take that much extra time, uh, so, and if there was a problem, it would speed it up for me to know where it was so I wouldn't have to go back and find them and the surface enter and the surface enter okay so all that works so let's take all our purple minus our head that's given us so much issues and we'll go ahead and change them to gray alright so we have this are we still solid yes we are we are closed surface so the last thing that we would have to do would be uh, add cutters. So let's go ahead and add those cutters. And uh, it will go to wireframe mode. And I'm not going to cut all the way through. Uh, so first thing I want to do is make that a little bit bigger and then drag this up to where close to the bottom. And then I'll hit uh, enter. And then we'll do the same thing to this here go to cutters and we'll do the same thing drag that up just a little and drag that up to where it's almost touching the stone and we'll hit enter and the last one here these stones here cutters drag that up a little and drag that up to where it's almost touching and we'll hit enter alright so now I'll go ahead and take all these and mirror them over to the other side F4 and go back to shaded uh, you know what I should have now it's going to cut my prongs which I don't want so I am going to delete those Sorry guys, uh, I guess I sh didn't have to, but really that's what I would do. Uh, I didn't, uh, now that my prongs are joined, I don't want it cutting into my uh, stone, or my prongs. I want to do the cutting myself, so uh, I'm going to make that uh, smaller so that it's not cutting into my prongs, or if it is, it's very, very minimal. Let's go back here. still cutting into my prongs. There we go. Alright, now that's much better. Now we can drag this up. Something like that and drag that up and hit enter. Okay, so redo these one more time this group here and again I want to make that so it's not cutting my prongs drag this up something like that drag this up 
Yeah. And then hit enter. And then our last one there. Cutters. Ooh, I did something wrong there. <laughs> Let's just get rid of that and we'll redo it. Select gems, these gems here. Wow, what's going on there? Girdle X offset. Something like that. Grab that, bring it up. And then grab our bottom here. Just so it's just below the point when the jeweler sets it, he's going to make sure. Well, I would hope uh, uh, that uh, that point is not touching the bottom because the stone will shatter. All right, so we have all this. So let's take these and mirror them over. F4. And now it's just doing our boolean. Let's check it out, see how it does. Solids, boolean difference. This would be our first surface, enter, we'll take that first row there, hit enter, just for a test, and hit enter, and we'll hide those stones, and there, see, it cuts the stone, it cuts it, but it doesn't really cut into the prong, and that's, that's what I want. Uh, that way, when I go to set the stones, I can cut the prongs. Uh, that's just me, it may be other people like uh, having the stones cut. Uh, so let's go back to, uh, not Boolean Union, let's abort that, cancel. Select first surface, enter, second surface, enter. Did I do Boolean Union? We'll back out of that. Boolean difference, this surface, enter, this surface, enter. Enter. This surface, enter, this, enter. Enter and we'll just get our other side there. So far, so good. Nothing's messing up. One more. I don't know why it didn't. I thought I did those. Let's hide these stones. See, that's okay. Well, it did it. I don't know why it. Uh, first surface enter, second surface enter, why it brought them back. Enter. Let's hide though. Yeah, it's making the cuts. I don't know what the deal is with it. Uh, it will. Matrix is doing some crazy stuff tonight. <laughs> And hit enter. Enter. And there they brought them back again. So let's hide those real quick. Boom, boom, boom. And there they all are. Okay. And that's it, people. Uh, we have a multicolored stone ring here. <laughs> Uh, so basically just take your stones, change them back to the color, and then you have uh, your ring. But really, Matrix doesn't have a, a multi-stone uh, gems on curve. You kind of have to improvise a little. But still, uh, you can get it, get, it, get it done. No problems. And it's not, not, not bad. Not bad. little extra steps I guess and is our ring yes it is okay so uh, well, there you have it I'll, I'll go do a render but uh, you can skate of course if you haven't already <laughs> uh, and uh, I appreciate you stopping by and watching um, hopefully the video helped I know there was a couple uh, snags there tonight uh, but it happens right uh, so let's go to uh, our sapphire here, blue sapphire. We'll click on this and we'll make that a blue sapphire. And we'll go to our 
uh, 3.1 diamonds. We'll select all our blue and go to put that on diamonds. And we'll select our purple and our green and put that on to white gold. And we'll do a real quick see how it's doing. And it looks like it's okay. So we'll set it up how we want it. Actually, let's do this. And uh, I'll just do a quick render here. Something like that, maybe. And uh, we'll type in matrix gold there, classic. And we'll hit render. Give it a second, turn on denoiser, and there you go. Nice little sapphire diamond cathedral ring. Thanks very much for watching, I appreciate it. Uh, if you have any other questions on the curves uh, in the multi-stone, let me, let me know and I'll, I'll try and work it out. I haven't stopped uh, researching it, so... Uh, uh, I'll keep you posted if anything comes up. Thanks very much for watching. Good designing.